today we're just going to have a quick look at revising what an urban heat island profile or an urban heat island is. So this is a profile here in front of you. You can see downtown, generally the temperatures are much higher than the surrounding or rural areas. All right, so generally if we talk about an urban heat island, we're talking approximately in the range of two to four degrees Celsius warmer in the downtown area than surrounding areas. Now that can be much warmer sometimes in some places, seven to 10 degrees warmer. All right. So if we're going through and we're revising the reasons why, we're really talking about a lot about anthropogenic activities and reasons, right? We can start in the top right hand corner here. We can see the nature of the surface. So if we're talking about population growth, increased urbanization, we're talking about downtown, the land is very valuable, right? So this is the area where all roads, main roads, highways generally lead and intersect. So we have much lower levels of albedo. So if the surface is asphalt, it's one of the lowest levels of albedo, right? So that's going to absorb a lot of incoming solar radiation. And as you can see here, again, a lot of open space. It's a dark surface, low albedo, but it's also accompanied with a lot of vehicle emissions. Okay, so greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions, so carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide as well. All right, so that will trap outgoing long wave radiation later on in the evening. So again, we can look at our tall buildings. They will block and lower the average wind speed here as well. And the ones that I have here in this image are relatively dark. All right, so we're talking about anthropogenic activities. We can also talk about things like dust and construction as well, right, as another one of these here. If I go to the profile, you can see that sometimes you have a dip, right? You can see here, we've got the downtown area here. We're looking at our profile, and there's a dip here, right? We might have a park in urban areas. Quite often we do. So we're talking about these large trees here. You can see here there's a lot of shade. Right, and think about some of the processes that we look at here. So not just shade, we're talking about vegetation. It, don't be confused, all right? It doesn't reflect, it does absorb because it is actually quite dark. It does have a low albedo level, all right? So it will absorb the incoming solar radiation, but it uses it for photosynthesis. So it removes carbon dioxide for the, from the atmosphere. So it is a management strategy in urban areas such as Singapore as well. And then we can talk about that process of evapotranspiration. Now, if I have a lot of um, permeable surface here, I can have infiltration taking place. I need infiltration to take place if I'm going to have that process of evapotranspiration as well. So plants will absorb uh, the moisture, etc. So that's really important there, all right? So again, I can look at no tool buildings to block and lower the average wind speed and no vehicle emissions here, all right? So I'm going to expect a little dip here. So you could be asked in an examination question, to explain this particular location, right? Suburban residential areas, not as tall, so it's not blocking. I have less vehicles, but I do have, um, you know, generally an impermeable surface. I start to see along pavements here, some trees. I'm gonna have vehicles, but nothing like the inner urban area as well, all right? So this is basically what we're getting here. So less evapotranspiration, less infiltration, that's really important, all right, here, so I'm seeing this process of evapotranspiration here. Now, remember, in the evening, I would expect to see this much greater as a difference because the inner urban area will be releasing that long wave radiation that it's trapped throughout the day. If I've got a lot of greenhouse uh, gases in the atmosphere, a lot of that will also be trapped, all right, so... Remember that, if I talk about how I can manage, I can talk about planting more trees, I can look at Singapore, this will increase levels of shade and evapotranspiration as well. So green buildings, all right, green rooftops, that will also mean that I need less air conditioning, lighter buildings like I have here, so that can reflect a lot of the incoming solar radiation as well. All right, so here's a number of strategies that Singapore has got, and for you I've got a couple of examination questions here. All right, explain two ways in which and urban heat islands could be reduced. Okay.